Welcome back to In the Can. Next up, the film is called White Shadow. It tells the story of the other. The young boy's name is Alias. He is an albino, and I am talking with the director, Noaz Desha. Welcome, sir. Nice to see Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Congratulations. Thank you. Being in the Sundance Film Festival, but I think more congratulations for successfully completing your first film. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's, uh, it's the first time I, met, I find a, a story where I can put all the things I love doing into one and completely commit to it for uh, a good period of time. It's amazing to be here. And as we talked a little bit before we came on camera, I wanted to, to mention for folks who, who may not be familiar yet with the film or with you, uh, one of the things that was very interesting and really jumped out to me is your background and experience having been a film composer yeah. previously and now getting ready to publish a graphic novel and to me that I, I get a lot from those pieces of information about how you see film and how you see the yeah. breadth of film with with you know film composition being an important part and, and the visual of being able to create everything without respect to budget in a graphic novel right. I mean uh, see all these things come from the same uh, origin. You have an abstract idea and you commit to it and it finds a way to manifest. It could be music, a movie, a drawing. As long as you're willing to go with it until it shows itself, reveals itself for you. In this case, it was a whole story, a whole world uh, that started from actually going and teaching in East Africa and then evolved into a movie. So. And for folks who, who haven't read the synopsis, tell folks the overall yeah, arc or, of the story. Well, it's a story about Elias. He's a, he's a young al albino boy uh, in, uh, in the rural area uh, uh, in East Africa. And um, albinos, in, uh, we find out in the past years that albinos are hunted for their flesh, uh, for luck. That witch doctors have been organizing killings, and you could sell a body, you know, limbs of an albino, for $100,000 in a country where the Sometimes the, the annual income is $500, $700 a year. And uh, it became a commodity. Uh, it's a form of survival. So we chose to uh, make a fiction film about it, also to create a level of detachment and allow you to go into the imagination of the boy, not just the hard, cold, harsh reality of it, because that's really hard to deal with. And to put you in that mindset, of somebody that has to go through that experience, like a closed fist the entire time. And we found an incredible actor, an incredible young boy, that could carry that. He could carry that intensity through the whole film, and you could go with him through the experience. It's always fascinating to me the importance of, in this case, that one person, that lead actor, who either you can make a film that's incredible, or you can make, maybe you can't make a film at all if you don't find that person. He was waiting for us. He said he was waiting for us. He had a song he prepared. Uh, we, we, did a, we did workshops, and we travel. There's a, a person that plays his father in the movie, in the beginning, and uh, he had a group called Albino Revolution Cultural Troop, and they traveling all the uh, through all these regions to create awareness for the situation, and together with his help, we did workshops where all these kids came and we do a, a dream workshop, and they would come and talk about their dreams and what they want to be, and some of the kids were more prone to uh, storytelling, and. Slowly we isolated it, those kids. And him in particular, he was ready. He said, I was, I've been waiting for you, basically. That's amazing. Yeah. Let's take a look at the clip. Yeah. White Shadow. I have to confess, with my old man's eyes, I'm too far away from the yeah. monitor to be able to read the subtitles. But I get the poignancy and the beauty. Well, this is, this is the younger boy in the movie. He more, he's more um, a spirit that guides the other uh, lead character. Um, they live in a hideout where they're safer at night and in the day they sell DVDs and sunglasses between traffic. Um, this is also in particular a clip we could show here. The other clips are a little bit harder to show. Um, we, it's important maybe to share how uh, the process was done. But we went there and we knew we were going to make a workshop with uh, people from the region and we decided that the people that are good in the workshop uh, we were teaching film. Uh, we'll keep them with us and train them as our crew. And then the entire crew was local. And if we have, we have scenes in the movie where the entire village participates, so we got the entire village to participate. We would talk to the whole village, we'd knock on every door, have a village meeting, 
And uh, we w didn't have money, but we, but in a way, money could pollute your intimacy yes. of, because if you try to solve things with money, you are distancing yourself from the subject. Here we were able to go, okay, all the mamans in the village are gonna cook, we're gonna buy the groceries and pay them, and the, in the day where there's 200, 300 people participating, then the whole village was participating. So it became their movie, and therefore it opened all the doors for us. We were able to, you know, um, people were telling their own stories in that sense. And once they understood that it's fun and we're doing a movie together, they were committed more than anything you could ever see. And anything, and anything more than money could ever. Yeah, because it was their movie, it was their film. With such a difficult subject, and yet as you're telling me this, I'm, I'm smiling because yeah. I, I'm picturing a really beautiful time together and a really beautiful scene. And I have to think that with a hard subject matter, you, you got a, a sort of a recompense of, of joy in being with these yeah, people. Yeah, of course. I mean, you make very strong friendships. And everybody feels it's a very important story to tell. So anywhere from the government to the police, the local exorcist, everybody's participating. So we could, for the military, the military is in the movie. The police, the police is playing it. We cast the people that are true to their own story. And therefore, the technical part of doing what they do, how they carry themselves, so they hold uh, something, was already clear. So it was just a matter of content and getting them into play. And that was incredible fun, incredible fun. Yeah. And talk about the process of finishing filming and going into editing and, and that process and, and between now we and were being making here at the festival and then we all the process was um, from the beginning all parts were organic with each other we were making music before we wrote the script we wrote the script while I was teaching in the workshop and a little bit before everything was happening kind of in a natural place where it should be and Editing took quite a while because it needed to be, you needed to translate everything and make sure you're not missing out any little nuances of the language. The movie's in Swahili, and, uh, and although it's all rehearsed and it's text, when you translate things to Swahili, you get all these beautiful things that you don't have in your original English version, and you don't want to miss them out. So you translate every little thing. And that took months and months and months to have like an audio guide beneath so you can edit everything together and then you get the movie. So it's a long process. But the core idea of doing that, if you really love it, if you really believe in it, it guides you. And it kind of it spreads and infects in a really good way everything you do. So in the hard times where you're going crazy in an editing system yes. and you're not sure how it's going to end up, you remind yourself why you're doing it. And you, rem you see that abstract core idea and it gives you power. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. It's beautifully said. I can't wait to see this film. We do a lot of work getting ourselves ready. So as soon as Sundance is over, then I go see all the films. Please, come and see White Shadow. Congratulations. Thank you very Thank much. You. Noah Azdeshe, oh. he is the director of White Shadow. Great to have him with us. Next up on In the Can, the film is Rich Hill. You're going to love this conversation. Some fine young men who happen to also be very great actors. Stay tuned.